Hattiesburg Mayor Johnny Dupree joining us now here at the Fox 23 studios. We appreciate you coming by this morning, or actually this afternoon. I'm not used to the same this morning. <laughs> other, other I place. understand. Well, we, last time we met, it was early in the morning. We were uh, following up on a tornado. Uh, following up on a tornado, that's true. A lot has happened in those last several months. It's been, been a long year. <laughs> it's been, been a long year. <laughs> probably one of the hardest years of your public service life, I would imagine. Well, that I, have. probably one of the most memorable ones. Mm -hmm. I put it that way. Yeah. I mean, you know, because we had Katrina and all that going on, but it was exactly. certainly memorable. Well, let's start out, <clears throat> obviously, and, and I want to let everybody know why we asked you to come. Um, you know, obviously the election has been contentious for you. Yeah. And, and there are a lot of questions out there, things probably that you've wanted to address, um, whether it's questions or rumors or misconceptions, whatever. And so first thing I wanted to do was just give you an opportunity to say what you would like to say to the people of Hattiesburg. Well, first of all, you know, as I've always said, Dean, I, this is probably the, the greatest joy that I have in my life as serving as the mayor of Hattiesburg. You know, besides uh, being saved and married and children and grandchildren, I uh, can't think of anything better to do. Um, I started this journey a long time ago, uh, public servant. And I, I do it because it, it makes me feel good. I think I have a lot to, uh, to do in the community as far as changing uh, the community for the better. And that's really what this is all about. I think that uh, anybody that does it for any other reason, for the money or the fame or whatever, then they're in for a rude awakening. Uh, so I appreciate them allowing me the opportunity to do this. Certainly, the last thing I want, the last thing I wanted, was for an election in the city of Hattiesburg to last this long. Uh, that's not what the city of, citizens of Hattiesburg deserve. Uh, that's not what we need in order to continue the growth that we've had over these many years. Uh, you know, I, I tell many people that if it had been reversed, uh, I would, and my wife and family would be in Disney World right now. Uh, but it didn't, and so we continue to serve as mayor, and, uh, and hopefully on September 24th, uh, we'll continue after that. Well, one of the questions that um, I guess what I wanted to start with is, what are your general thoughts regarding that first election? Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, there were um, a lot of people that didn't vote. Uh, I'm saddened by that because, you know, we, we always want as many people to vote as we can. Um, uh, so, you know, 35 percent of the people voting is not uh, a mandate for anybody. Right. Uh, you know, the, it's good the law only says you have to win by one in a general election. Uh, I think the number of people, I'm told, did not vote. As far as I'm concerned, I can't speak for the other camp uh, because they thought, we were going to uh, be successful. I mean, I mean, look at Hattiesburg. Uh, certainly we have our concerns. Uh, like every city has a concern. I mean, I don't know of any city in America, and you can pick the best one, there are always concerns. There's something in there. Uh, the best household, the best family, there are always concerns. Um, you know, but when you look at where we are economically, uh, you know, within the 90 days of the storm, then we uh, actually uh, invited or welcomed uh, General uh, Dynamics into Hattiesburg with 1,250 new jobs. The uh, storm you're talking about, the tornado. The tornado, right. in February the, the 10th. Uh, unemployment is less than the state, under 8%. Uh, our crime uh, rate is, um, uh, a lot of cities would like to have the, the numbers that we have. I mean, we're not proud of the numbers just recently, but, uh, but when you look at them in totality, uh, you know, a lot of cities would love to have the, the crime rate that we have. Uh, when you look at um, uh, where we are socially, uh, I think we were the envy uh, of, the, of the state. So uh, most people thought, well, he's going to win. And well, I said most people, my supporters. And they, they stayed at home. Uh, and that's sad because if they had come out, then we wouldn't be sitting here now. So some general thoughts then on that first election. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, then we, we moved into the prolonged period of Counting the ballots, uh, and yeah. the, whole, the whole thing. What was yeah. your thoughts during that time? Well, you know, I didn't even go down there. Mm -hmm. uh, I went. I went the last day. Um, right, because I was there. And that's right. right. I, I, I saw I, you I, came down that last. I came the last day. day. Mm -hmm. I, I let the people who run the elections run the elections. I let those who were concerned about what was going on go down and see. And of course, you know, I had watchers watching the watchers uh, and. Uh, doing what they need to do. There was really wasn't a uh, uh, people say a uh, recount. It really wasn't a recount. You can't recount a machine votes, but they were looking at the paper ballots that they did have. And uh, 
You know, my very first election, uh, uh, we did that. Um, and we won by 11 votes in the primary. And I guess I had visions of that again. Um, and your first election for mayor or supervisor? No, supervisor. 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 Way, way long time ago. It was back in the dark ages, you know, when the dinosaurs <laughs> roamed the earth. <laughs> well, they, 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 were they, were, they, they were using stone. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> putting little dashes there. But, uh, you know, I, I came down that last uh, day before I had, we had to uh, leave uh, for New York. Um, and, you know, it, uh, it seemed like it was, everybody was so tense. It, it was... Um, uh, and, and, I, and I, again, I, I thought that that was going to be the end of it. I was hoping that that was going to be the end of it. Two days later, we were certified as the mayor. I thought that was over. We could move forward in Hattiesburg. Uh, while it was not costing us any money, time is money. And, uh, and so it was costing us time. I think it, was, it cost us the ability to move forward, to do things that we want to consider and, and uh, projects we'd like to move forward with. Because we were worried uh, trying to deal with day-to-day -day stuff and the uh, and re-election or election and counting the ballots, if you will. You know. Do you think there were some votes that were cast during that first election that that were on the line, were over the line, should have been thrown out, should have been kept? Well, you know, Dean. You know, my. Um, can you cut it for a minute? Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I saw a name down there. Um, yeah. This is, he had called me on okay. a previous matter. This okay. Was, uh, uh, whatever okay. I see that, this was for Cliff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Back, so it, kind of, it kind of threw me off. Sorry it kind that. of threw me yeah, off. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, the, um, sorry. Well, yeah, so I, in that first uh, uh, ballot counting we had talked about, you came down. Um, do you think there were some oh. ballots that were counted there that should have been kept, should have been excluded? Well, you know, then I think that the, I think that anyone who voted, mm -hmm. their vote should have been counted. It doesn't matter if it was for me or it's for Mr. Ware; they should have been counted. You know, my premise has always been that, and I think the whole the whole process of voting. That's why we have the best process in, in the world. Th that if you vote, and I think that even back in 1966, when the federal government went over to Alabama, and some of the same thing was going on. Federal government and the state said of Alabama said that if a person votes and then there is something like someone didn't sign something or didn't initial something or whatever, that's not the fault of the voter. The voters vote ought to count. It should. That was their. That's their will. That's their right to vote and it shouldn't be thrown out. That's our. That was our whole premise. It didn't matter if they were for me or Mr. Ware, but someone who votes and because somebody else didn't do something mm -hmm. shouldn't disallow their vote. They should not disallow their vote. Now, there would be some that would say, certainly we agree with that premise. Uh, if there were, you know, there were, there were arguments, obviously, about signatures not being the right place or something like that in those affidavit ballots. Um, you're saying those probably should have counted anyway because somebody actually did place the vote. Well, there were signatures about somebody else, about mm -hmm. somebody right. else's signature, somebody else's whatever. But the person who voted, there's no question about them voting. When I mean, there's not a question about them voting, I mean, there's one thing in there um, about uh, whether a, a, um, uh, you should take a ballot uh, and sign a, a, a delivery, uh, a service of delivery or something like that. Um, but if you read the, the application, it says if you're going to hand carry it, then you need to sign it. If you don't hand carry it and it's mail, then you just don't need to, 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 to sign it. But of course, the expert said you need to sign it anyway. Well, if you're not given it to sign, you can't sign it. Yeah, how can you sign it? How can you sign it? Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't throw out someone's ballot because somebody else didn't sign something that they weren't given it. Those are the kind of things that I'm talking about. Um, and you know, there was a 87 year old lady at my church yesterday who um, uh, did the roadside ballot, and I think hers was thrown out. Because it was either put in the wrong envelope or whatever. Well, that's the, the, the semantics. Uh, you know, a person who votes takes the time to vote out of their schedule, and they have the right to vote. Should have their vote counted. Now, then you're going to have people, as you just said, that are going to be on the other side. They're going to argue another side. And I'm not here to argue once. I'm not here to 
argue with people who, who think differently. I mean, if they think differently, that's what makes America great. You know, uh, hopefully what comes out of this is, is I think one thing, somebody else thinks something else, well, out of this comes something even better. It comes a better understanding. I give you for instance, there was a two-star general that there was debatable, it was debated about whether he filled it out correctly or not. Uh, a appellate judge from Hattiesburg, who there was some debate whether they filled us out right. Well, these people are very educated people. Well, hopefully our legislature would take a look at the process for absentee ballots, streamline it, and make it a lot easier for people to do it. So out of all of this, hopefully comes a better process. You know, this process that we're using is for years and years and years old, and, and it needs some streamlining, it needs some updating, and hopefully that's what's going to happen. Right. You've obviously been, uh, the media has been, a lot of folks have been, both media, bloggers, whatever, <coughs> have been really covering this hard. Yeah. What, what, are, what are your thoughts on that? Do you feel like you've been portrayed fairly? Well, you know, it's hard to be inside the storm. And then, and then try to count the trees out there. Um, I think in some regard, I think the, the media has been uh, fair. I think in some regards, the, the media may be a little biased uh, as to how they, you know, I've always had this continue. I think you, we talked about it before we even sat down, Dean, that, that, that uh, my philosophy has always been for the media is to cover the news, not to make the news. And I think in some instances, uh, the media tries to make something uh, out of a situation that's really not there. And I understand that, and I guess it's, you're supposed to have people to watch your news and to sell advertising and all those kinds of things. Uh, I, you know, what, what has happened though, because of all this media attention, has gone all across the nation. And, uh, and, it, and it's, um, you know, we've gone across the nation before, Hattiesburg has, but it has always been very, very positive. And I think that maybe, uh, and I've said it before, so I think that maybe we in Hattiesburg have been looking through rose-colored glasses. I think that we've been uh, probably patting ourselves on the back about how far we've come in so many areas. And we may not have come as far as we think that we have. Uh, and I think this is an opportunity to have dialogue and to see how we can regain uh, uh, the position in the marketplace that we've always had. Um, uh, and if there's some issues that we need to discuss, clear up, then we need to do that. Uh, again, I, I see only good things coming out of this. Uh, you know, and I'd say good things. Yeah, I had an election June the 4th, had a two-week trial, and now another election 30 days from now. But it's got to be something good. And we know the Bible says, paraphrasing, that the end is better than the beginning. And certainly our end has to be better than the beginning has to be in Hattiesburg. And I, and I think that we have good things to in store. Um, some people have said that after the election, <sighs> trial, uh, maybe you should have had some sort of an address for the people of Hattiesburg. What's your thoughts on that? Well, you know, um, there are a lot of people that think a lot of things, uh, you know, I, they could be right. I'm, I'm not going to second guess what some people think and what they don't think. Uh, you know, that's really up to uh, the people to do that. Uh, you know, sometimes, I know my wife and I have our little discussions, uh, sometimes uh, right afterward is not the best time to talk to her. Sometimes you need to wait a little bit before you go and talk to her. Uh, and there are some that do it right after. Uh, who knows what's, this, what's the right recipe? Uh, I, I don't know. Um, what do you think, if anything, would you, looking back, would you have done something differently? As it relates to? As it relates to the, the trial or relates to the election or? No, you know, then we we've done elections the way we always have. You know that, that you know I need to and, and, and you know uh, even Mr. Ware said that we did nothing wrong. He released the election commission from uh, the lawsuit. They were gone. Did nothing wrong. Uh, there was no fraud. There was no vote buying. There was none of that stuff that people always get upset about. None of that happened. We're talking about things that people didn't do uh, and did not do them uh, intentionally. Things that human beings do or don't do, like didn't sign something, didn't initial something. We're, we're not perfect. There are no perfect elections. Um, 
so, you know, we're, we've always run fair and honest elections. Uh, we've always been just as transparent as we could. You know, we didn't put on a two week or week and a half defense because Hattiesburg didn't need that. You know, we could have pointed fingers. We could have brought in witnesses. We could have shown ballots. We could have talked about who was related to who and why. That wasn't good for Hattiesburg. Uh, I made the decision that we'd done nothing wrong. Made the decision that Hattiesburg didn't need another week and a half trial to go on. I made the decision I'm going to put it in the hands of God. And I was going to let the Lord determine the fate, my fate, uh, and in essence, I guess the fate of Hattiesburg. I was just not—I was not going to do that. Uh, Hattiesburg deserves better. When you say the fate of Hattiesburg, do you think of this as being maybe a watershed moment for the city, uh, one way or the other? Or is well, this... again, I think that if if you look at it, and you can look at it half full, or half empty, uh, it's according to how you want to look at it. Then I want to look at it as an opportunity for us to move, really move forward, and to really talk about some things that we may not have been able to talk about that we've kind of just put in the back of our mind and, and we need dialogue about. We, you know, on the eve of um, the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King's march on Washington, he talked about economic um, uh, things, you know, uh, equality. He, he, he talked about uh, educational equality. But it's really about social equality. That's really what it's about. It's about us being able to sit and talk with one another, to eat with one another, to discuss issues without going to fisticuffs with one another. It's about our children going to school together. Uh, it's about growing up together in the same neighborhoods. That's what the, he was talking about. It's that social equality that for all people, not just for black people, but for all people. Mm -hmm. And I think that after 50 years, Sometimes you have to revisit things in order to get them right, get them straight. Um, and, and I think that we've probably taken a lot of things for granted here in Hattiesburg. Uh, and I think that Hattiesburg's always been known to be a forward-thinking um, uh, community, a very tolerable community, one that wants to do right with everybody. And, and I think, uh, and, I, and I have, my, I guess my glass is, is half full. So, uh, I think we're in for better times. Obviously, it sounds like, and maybe I'm not hearing you right, but it sounds like maybe you're alluding to the fact that this, in some people's eyes, this race is, has boiled down to uh, maybe a racial issue. Is that, am I no. hearing you right or no? No, I, no, I, no, I think that, I think you have to be tolerable about the way people think. I mean, you know, things don't always boil down to black and white. And I think, I think we too quickly start saying, well, something's black and something's white. Well, there is a gray area, and sometimes it, uh, it is an understanding, a misunderstanding. Dean, you grew up one way and I grew up another way. And you can say tomato, I can say tomato. But it means the same thing. But because we grew up in di had different backgrounds, sometimes we need to explain that, that that is the same piece of fruit that we're talking about. And I think that's where we are, is that we've not sat down and talked about us and where we're going and socially where we're headed in Hattiesburg. And I think it's a good time to do that. It certainly opens up that dialogue. I, I think it does. I think, and it doesn't always boil down to race, Dean. And I think we're too fast. I think we're always too fast. That's kind of a catch-all, mm -hmm. always race. Well, it's not all the way race. My wife and I sometimes have to sit down. I use that analogy all the time. And she probably killed me when I said <laughs> it. But we, we have to sit down and talk about things that, Again, because even my wife and myself grew up in different, you know, she, she had a, a father and a mother and, uh, uh, and seven kids. I had a mother and three kids. That's a totally different dynamic as far as growing up. And so her, her uh, outlook and her views uh, probably were a little bit different when we, first, when we first got married 40 years ago. Now we're there more or less jailed, you know, but there, there's still remnants of it out there sometimes. Sometimes we have to sit down. I call it family meetings. Yeah. Um, let me ask about the uh, the city hall being unlocked. There are always people who want to have conspiracy theories and ideas. What, what what's your take on that? I think uh, City of Hattiesburg is blessed to have somebody like Eddie Myers. Eddie Myers. 
and, and I'm glad you mentioned him because that certainly dovetails into where yeah. we were going and his yeah. resignation and all yeah. that. So, yeah. I, I think we're blessed to have someone the caliber of, of Eddie Myers, 32 years service, public servant. Um, uh, Eddie um, was the first uh, city clerk in the state of Mississippi to attain the master's level. People call him from all over the state, uh, from every city. He's on, he's on the international board of clerks, international board of clerks. Been on that board of directors for a number of years now. Um, uh, we should be proud. Um, uh, Eddie Myers, along with his staff, worked numerous hours from the election to the so-called recount, if you will. Uh, I excuse the analogy, but they were dog tired. Eddie said, you all go home. You're tired. I'll, I'll lock up. I'll take care of it. Well, you have to understand, that's not his job to lock doors. That's not his job. There are other people that have that responsibility. He said to go home. And Eddie did what he was supposed to do, cleaned up, did the files, whatever, and did what I've done a number of times when I've pulled off from my house. Think, did I unplug the, the iron? Did I let the garage door down? You know how many times I've done that? And he didn't lock the door. But he had a seal on the box. The box had not been, uh, the seal had not been broken. The box was in the safe. And they understand, there's no law, no criteria, nothing that says you have to lock the box in a safe. The other boxes were outside, sealed, nothing had been disturbed. It was one of those things, a human error. You know, it was um, a comedy of errors, I guess. Uh, nothing intentional again. Nobody found it. The first thing he did after they called the police, Eddie called me and said, man, I'm sorry. I, I left, left the door open. I, I got it. The next thing he did was call Dave Ware. He said, Dave, I'm sorry. I, I left the door open. I, and he, he went down the line. He did what he was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he was supposed to even let us know, but he did. And, uh, you know, uh, and it's a travesty that he's not going to be with us. And I know that... Um Obviously, there was some, some give and take, I guess, between you and some council members regarding his resignation, or maybe that, that played No, there wasn't any give and take. <laughs> no, there wasn't any give and take. Tell me your thoughts on that. Well, what I, happened? Well, I mean, uh, Eddie called me on a, on a Saturday, um, I, I don't know, a week ago, two weeks ago, almost, I don't remember quite when, and said that he'd had uh, a couple of uh, council members come by his house and basically giving him an ultimatum about uh, about. Uh, resigning, retiring, uh, or they were going to give him a vote of no confidence. And, uh, you know, Ed is a very, very proud man. Uh, if anybody knows him, knows how proud he is. He's proud of the fact that, that he's uh, made a very good career out of being a public servant and well-respected across this state. The last thing Ed wanted was a vote of no confidence. Uh, he didn't want not want to leave uh, public service with a vote of no confidence. And they said they gave him um, a 72 hour notice. Um, I don't think that was proper to go to a man's house with his wife there and tell them that. That was not proper. There were other venues they could have used in order to make that happen. And um, because of it, we're losing uh, a, a great public servant. Now, is, I assume that position is appointed. Is that correct? It is appointed. And, and Appointed by the mayor's office? I, I it's appointed by the mayor, and it is ratified by the city council. And you have to understand, there are elected clerks in the state of Mississippi. There are elected, elected election commissioners in the state of Mississippi. And, and, and I know we don't have that, but if there were, if Eddie was an elected official and if the election commission was elected, they'd still be serving. They would still be overseeing the election because they did nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. They did nothing wrong. Uh, you know, when you don't get your desired outcome and you say, well, we don't want those people to work anymore, that's not fair to, especially when the election commission are volunteers. Now, there are, there are election commissions for the county that are elected. Now, if this had happened with them, it really wouldn't matter who wanted what, they would still serve because they're elected to do that. Right. And this, this uh, election commission was appointed to do their job, to do just this. And Eddie was appointed to do just this and um, to say we don't want them there. Uh, I, I mean, you know, uh, whoever you put it, and see, what you end up with, then, 
You get, who do you get to become the clerk? Who do you get with 32 years of experience to come to Hattiesburg right now to serve as clerk? So you end up appointing somebody, somebody, to oversee an election that they possibly have no idea how to do. And you're supposed to have a fair and honest and <laughs> transparent election? How, how are you going to do that? Who do you get to, to do that? that? That's what we are faced with, someone coming in here where the federal government is going to be watching, the state government is watching, and watching the county, watching the city, watch, everybody's going to be watching everybody. And you're not going to have someone who knows. And see, the other thing people don't understand is the, the city has an election once every four years. So in 2009, we only had one council person who had an opponent. And of course, I had an opponent, had Sean O'Hara. Mm -hmm. So basically, the people that were there had never run an election before. So the last election we really had was in 05. So the last election we had was eight years ago. Now, the county, in contrast, has an election every year, save this year because municipal election. So they have people that constantly are going over, horning their, you know, the things that they do. I mean, and, and, you know, and the person who runs that, like it does in all other 81 counties, mm -hmm. is the circuit clerk, who happens to be on the ballot, overseeing their own race. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I see what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I certainly do. Yeah. And if I summarize what you're saying, you're saying that we now have a position that is, by all intents and purposes, going to be vacant at the time that the where it can be, where it can be statute, if state statute. You know, went to the court. They talk about what legal and illegal and right. Well, legally, we have to have a person serving as clerk to um, basically do the the nuts and bolts for the for the election. But but again. Who do, you, who do you get? Someone who knows about election, uh, someone who knows how who, uh, the duties of a, see he's not only the clerk, he's also the city administrator. So he also runs the water billing office, he, he runs the, uh, the budget office, the finance office. Uh, I mean, you know. So it's more than just the election. It's just more than just the election. So you get somebody here who doesn't know any of that stuff. And, he, and he's got the institutional knowledge too. And that is not an old man. You know, he's, he's, he's got years left that he was willing to give. Um, and, and again, who do, you, who do you put in that position? If you want a fair election and you want an honest election, you want a transparent election, you want somebody in there who knows what they're doing. I have some idea of what they're doing, yeah. yeah. I know that, obviously, again, this was a, <clears throat> uh, instigated by the council, or some council members. Um, also, the last, this past week, council meeting. There was some verbal sparring going on as there you had placed up uh, five new members. Correct. Well, three three returning members and two new members. Correct. They were going to return to the election commission. Correct. And um, two of those members were approved, the, the new ones. Correct. The three returning members were uh, not approved. Correct. Where does that leave us now and, and what are your, what's your views on that? Well, um, I, I called all five. And I, and I told them that according to uh, state statute, the law was legal and was not legal. The law uh, said that they, are, um, that they could serve as holdovers uh, if, they were, if, they, if they were brought forth uh, and they were not voted upon. And if that would have happened, would they be willing to serve? Uh, two said no. Uh, I really appreciate it. They were very gracious, said we appreciate the opportunity. It's something we'll always remember. We appreciate you doing that, um, but we don't want to serve. And so um, I had a short list of people that I wanted to call, and, um, and we were blessed enough that the first two people I called. Uh, and see, there's no provision for them to be out of wards, but I try to make sure, be fair, I try to make sure they all serve out of all, someone from each ward. But there's no provision for that. I could get them all out of one ward, out of the same ward, but there's no provision for that. So I, I wanted to make sure that... Um, that we that each ward was represented. So the first two people I called, one from each ward, those two wards, they accepted. Uh, good people, just like the three good people who said, "I want to serve." I mean, I mean, they have to, you know, they they have their name has been out there too, and they they want to make sure people understand they can run a fair, honest, transparent election just like they did before. Again, 
Mr. Ware, they were dropped from the lawsuit. So apparently they did nothing wrong. So just their appearance there, just their names there, it's not fair to just, I mean, just take them out because they were the former. And so they said yes. And so I put them, their names forth, the council voted them down, and, um, uh, uh, and they are holdovers, and they will serve. And so there was a letter to the Attorney General's office, or you got an opinion from the Attorney General's office, correct? That correct, correct. That, that said that there was an opinion. Well, there was an opinion, and then I called, or I, I, I had an email sent to them to clarify the opinion, to make sure what I was reading in the opinion, because I've read opinions before, and sometimes they don't read what you think. They read a different way, uh, you know, than what you, especially if you want them to read a certain way, and they may not read the way you want them to read. And so. I wanted a clarification. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I was reading it the way I thought I was reading it. And the answer I got back from them was, yes, you are reading it correctly. Uh, and so uh, we'll go forward uh, you know, with that. There was a, a complaint about two of the commissioner, or, yeah, two of the election commissioners that may have had a, a sign, an election sign in their yards supporting a candidate do you look what do you think? i mean I, I, look, I don't know if it's true or not i just know I, look, the look so I, I, I don't know i don't know uh you know we put out thousands of signs we had thousands of signs out in Hesbury, just like the other camp did i don't know who had signs and who didn't have signs i mean i've got an allegation that council members had signs in their yard for mr webb is that true or not i don't know are they allowed to i don't know I'm oh not, sure they are yeah they are yeah. allowed to oh yeah yeah i mean because you because you are uh, elected official, you don't, you you don't, you you don't give up your right to uh, to show your support. But just like if that was true, the council members had a Mr. Ware sign in front of you. You shouldn't give up your objectivity for doing your job or uh, fairly and uh, uh, and transparently. And and if that was true for the for the uh, election commission, and I don't know that it was, but if it was true. You st they're still citizens, uh, and you can still serve. Uh, and 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 this is not all. People say, well, because they have a sign of your where well, they can't be objective. Well, I think people can. And they're, they're, look, these election commissioners that served, they're they're people of integrity. They're people that that are doing this because of love of Hattiesburg, and. Um, you know, you, people can make all kinds of allegations. That's why we didn't do a defense, because you can, see, you see how I just pointed the finger back and forth? See, that, that's not healthy. Uh, that, that's not healthy for our city. Um, but anyway. Okay. How does a, after September 24th, the election's over, how does the next mayor pick up and take the ball from here? Well, uh, hopefully, if it's me, uh, we just continue what we've been doing. Uh, uh, you know, there's many projects that we have uh, on the drawing board that um, we either have in the budget or we'll be working towards funding for. And we just continue working the way we have always. The, the, the sad thing about this is that what we've done over these past few months is we've not, uh, haven't been able to um, actually uh, put as much time in with those projects as we would have liked to put in. Because, you know, look, I mean, a week and a half I was sitting in the courtroom, uh, you know, and then all the day-to-day -day stuff, I, you know, I had, so. Uh, a question about, uh, you know, during the trial. Do you, there was an allegation of one of the, either jurors, one of the jurors possibly being intimidated also an allegation of maybe one of uh, somebody who was going to testify uh, having a background check run. What are your thoughts on that? Well as, far, well, as far as intimidation, um, I mean, the judge, uh, if you saw the, his ruling at the end, the very last day, uh, you know, people assumed that the intimidation was coming from outside uh, in the, I guess, in the courtroom, uh, in the gallery or whatever. But the judge made very plain, even in his ruling, and he verbalized it, that the Supreme Court has ruled that intimidation can actually come from within the jury room. And that's why 
anybody that if a juror, if a juror, uh, wanted to tell his, his or her true vote, then they could actually do that outside, and that's why you poll. So if there was intimidation, was it inside the jury room or outside the jury room? I don't know. Which You pick it. I mean, I can't tell you. I know that people that support me, I have faith in them that they didn't, they didn't intimidate anyone. Uh, look, there were five African Americans on the trial, I mean, in the jury. Well, one of them vo voted for Mr. Ware. So if somebody was going to be intimidated, wouldn't it be her? She voted three times. And then when the judge asked, do you want to come back another day and you get on? She said, yeah. So if anybody was intimidated, wouldn't it be one of the one of them, her? And in regards to the uh, allegation that there was a background check run on one of the possible witnesses. Well, you know, uh, Mr. Lawrence, gosh, my lord, Mr. Lawrence, city attorney. city attorney, Mr. Lawrence has been a city council person for I think eighteen years, city judge for two years, uh, he's been 12 years here with me as the, uh, the judge, I mean, the, as the uh, city attorney, uh, impeccable uh, reputation. Um, I don't think you could find two people that could, that, that could talk ill about him or whatever. Uh, well, he probably could. <laughs> you probably could find two. <laughs> three. <laughs> we'll say three, okay. <laughs> um, uh, just impeccable. Um, uh, you know, I, I took his explanation uh, for what it's worth. I mean, I took it for what he said it is, and I and I trust him, and I believe him. And I think he was uh, he was protecting the city of Hattiesburg. Uh, you know, I I took um, I took myself took a whole day on Saturday and took every tape I could find from the city of Hattiesburg. I looked at every one of them to see if that gentleman even voted because he said he did. Could not. I saw him come in four or five times. Never voted. Never voted. So, so whose story you want to believe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, when when you said that the Mr. Lawrence says that that was a he was trying to protect the city of Hattiesburg. Sure. Um, how is that protecting? I guess that, give me some context. What does well, that mean? Exactly? Well, that according to Mr. Lawrence, because uh -huh. Mr. Lawrence is one, uh, it's his story. So, I'm, it, it, so I'm telling you his story, and you have to. And sometimes you have to be real careful telling somebody else's story because you want to make sure you get it right. Um, uh, this gentleman came to Mr. Lawrence um, at some point in time and wanted to have some uh, crimes expunged that he had committed. Uh, and um, Mr. Lawrence told him that you needed to go to that state because he's not licensed in that state and you need to go find an attorney in that state in order to get them expunged. Now, when the guy, the gentleman came and said that he voted, and we all, and, and the city lost the, the ballot of the number one, no, he's probably number two person in the wear count. He's a number two person. I'm, I'm saying number two. He might be number one. I don't know. He's in the top five, I put it that way, in the wear's camp. And everybody knows that because he used to work for the city of Hattiesburg. In fact, we hired him after the 05 election. He needed a job. We hired him. So if you're going to trash a ballot, it wouldn't be one of the top five people in the camp. I mean, that's just, you wouldn't do that. Um, but that being said, he said that he voted. Um, there was a young lady said he voted, she voted, he voted. Uh, my understanding is that she wasn't real sure uh, whether he voted or not, but I think just surmised, yeah, I get There was so much going on during that time. I think she just basically took his word. He said he voted, okay, he voted. And uh, so since he asked for it to be, um, uh, to be expunged, his crimes or his whatever, criminal, the crimes he had committed, and then Mr. Lawrence heard that he said his ballot was lost. Well, Mr. Lawrence felt because he had heard me say this before, that because I found out about it, that I didn't believe that, that I didn't see him vote, I didn't see that that he believed that maybe uh, he had come in, said he voted, 
knowing the, and decided to vote, but realized, you know, I didn't get my, I didn't get that expunged. I better not vote. Which, if he didn't and he couldn't vote, he did the right thing. He did the right thing. But that doesn't sit well with the other group if you didn't vote. And so he wanted to make sure that he wanted to know if his crimes had been expunged. And if they haven't, hadn't, then that would be a reason for him actually not voting. And if there's anything that came up afterwards, uh, uh, allegations about us throwing boats away, us being the city or doing something like that, that he needed to, to have some kind of defense for the city. So we're saying these uh, charges that, that uh, this gentleman would have wanted expunged uh, were felonies. I have no idea. Okay. I, I have I no idea. That may have been a reason not to vote because, I, you know, felonies. Yeah, I, I, but you know, there are a lot of people who have, have committed some kind of crime and they don't think they can vote when they actually can. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't actually have to be a felony for oh, you not. Right. Oh, no, no, okay. it doesn't have to be a felony for you not to be able to vote. Um, your longtime assistant, John Brown, departed. Yeah. In, in this time period. Was this in any way related to oh, what was no. going on? Oh, no. Oh, no. You could bring John. You know John. Oh, you yes, can bring John. John, tell you the truth. Um, John and I had lunch together uh, a week and a half ago. We went out to Lethus and had lunch together. Uh, John Brown's wife still works for the city. Uh, John and I have a, a, a great relationship. Uh, John and I talked at least, even now, at least twice a week. We talked about the Dixie Boys and them winning and trying to do something for them on, on campus at halftime at the first game. Um, John is a minister for most people who may not know. Uh, John used to have uh, a church uh, in Columbia. Uh, he's a minister. He's associate pastor here in Hattiesburg. John's first love is the Lord. Uh, his first love is ministry. John's also a past former football player for the University of Southern Mississippi. He loves sports. He loves the Lord. He, he, he loves to counsel. He loves to pray. He, Mitch Williams gave him an opportunity. Uh, to come back out and do what he loves to do. Uh, and I can't, I don't blame John for, for doing this, uh, for doing it. Uh, he got the opportunity to, uh, to, to, uh, to be around sports, which he loves, opportunity to pray and talk and counsel with those guys, which is what he believed he was called to do. Not often you get an opportunity to do what you're called to do. And John had an opportunity to do what he's called to do. So John came and actually cried to a crime, where we both did in, in my office when he said he had to leave. Um, but uh, that's what you want. You want the best for your people. You want the best for, you know, you want them to have, you want them to be happy and successful. And success, sometimes uh, people have different ideas what is success and what's not success. It's what success uh, means to you. And of course, I had talked to John as he was about yeah. to resign anyway. Um, or actually, I guess he had turned in his letter of resignation okay. and we talked afterwards. And certainly that's what he said too. Yeah. And, and I just wanted to, yeah. to, to ask that because yeah. that was a question that was out there. Yeah. So. Um, looking forward, so should you get elected uh, coming up on the 24th, do you see any changes in your administration? Oh, there are always changes. Uh, you just said John's gone. Right, sure. <laughs> we just said John's gone. So, uh, you know, we had um, uh, an administrator uh, who passed last August who was a good friend of mine, um, Mr. Tate, and uh, very unexpectedly. Um, so certainly we have to do something in that area. Um, we had a public works uh, uh, manager that that, uh, that left. We have to do something there. Um, so there, there's some there's some opportunities, some things, to, some holes we got to fill. Uh, we've uh, chosen not to do that uh, because it wouldn't be fair to somebody to come in as a director and then if I'm not elected, well then you have to, uh, chances are that you'll have uh, you know, the, the, another mayor will come in and bring in another group of people, and that's not fair. And, and it's been very difficult to bring somebody in with, the un with uncertainty about well, how long am I, do I have four years or four days, uh, you know, so. How's this affected your family? Oh, gosh. My, um, you know, my wife takes things really to heart. Um, takes it personal? I don't think she takes no no she, she she doesn't take it personal. She she understood when we got into this life what it was about. So living in a bubble, she understands that. Uh, but she didn't uh, understand how cruel people could be sometimes. Um, how people what people could say. Um, I mean, say things that have absolutely no truth to them. Uh, uh, say things that um, uh, about our grandchildren, about our children. We have absolutely nothing to do with this at all. 
um, uh, she's she's taking it uh, she's taking it to heart. Um, it's just many many uh, nights that she didn't sleep real well. Many nights. It's not fair to her. Um, uh, but you know, my wife's a trooper. Uh, you know, my wife has has battled cancer and the death of two sisters and the death of my sister and. You know, uh, she takes care of a 93-year-old uh, mother. Um, I mean, so, you know, my wife, uh, she, 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 she'll be all right. You know, she'll be all right. Well, one of the goals of what we were sitting here to do was to, to let you get your message out. Is there something we haven't touched on that you would like to communicate to everybody? Uh, well, you know, I, I'm sure there's probably a, a lot of things I probably would, could say or should say or would like to say. Um, but I think what I said to start out with is what I end with again, and that is that uh, yeah, I appreciate the citizens uh, allowing me to serve for 12 years. I mean, you know, you know can you imagine this, this guy that um, the way I grew up in, um, in Hattiesburg um, to be allowed by the citizens of Hattiesburg. You know, the scripture says that, and I'm not certain not a prophet, but he's not known in his own hometown. Um, I mean, so, so for, for to be blessed like this by the citizens of Hattiesburg to say, we want you to, uh, to serve us as mayor, not only one time, not only two times, but three times, and ultimately the fourth time. Uh, I mean, that's, uh, that's quite an honor. Um, and I never want to disappoint them, never want to be uh, something that they'd be ashamed of. So um, I just, I, I do appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I did have one other question okay. here. Sorry about that. I That's thought okay. we were about to the end, but and we are. But, um, and, and so here's the question. When I was at the inauguration, I saw a lot of city employees that were there, obviously, to celebrate that. And so then the thought was, well, our city employees, they're obviously, and we talked a little bit about this, they are allowed to campaign for any candidate. Sure. I Is that correct? Sure. Um, and then... I guess, is there any, there's no, if they supported somebody else in another camp, that's not a problem, is that? I could name five people that I know right now that campaign for Mr. Ware. So that's obviously. They're, they're, sti saying. they're still working for the city of Hattiesburg. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, we had an at-will state. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have, we're not unionized. So I could have gone in on, January the 9th, I mean, June the 9th or 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and could have called all five and said, you no longer work for the city of Hattiesburg. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Uh, only thing I ask the people, the citizens, uh, the uh, employees of Hattiesburg is that you can't campaign on city time. Uh, you you got to take, you know, your, your personal leave. Uh, you have to. It have to be after five. If that's what time you get off, or three thirty, or whatever time you get off. Uh, and I can't stop you from from uh, supporting whoever it is you want to support. That's your right as a citizen, both of the United States and uh, the the, uh, the city of Hattiesburg. Hattiesburg Mayor Johnny Dupree, we appreciate okay. you being with us this afternoon. Appreciate you answering your questions and your candor. And sure. uh, of course, always wish you the best. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Wish you the best here, man.